Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Into the Lair. Uh, a little shout out to Zan, my man, over in D.C. Will's helping us out today. Um, I'm going to try the impossible, and I'm going to tell you right now it can't be done. I can't do what I want to do in one, two, three, four shows. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and explain to you how to get width and depth and we're going to start a foundation. We're not going to finish it. We're going to start the foundation for that. What we're going to start with is clearing out the middle. So today and next week, we're going to go into a little bit of how to clear out the middle. This isn't the only ways to do it. I'm just, I want you to not so much use my examples literally, but use literally, but use, um, use them as a way to think about your own techniques about um, moving things out the middle. We're going to start first off. <clears throat> okay, we're going to start with uh, a synth part, and I'm going to show you uh, a pretty basic way. This is a plugin called Isotope, and uh, the reason I chose this is because it's fairly representative of um, of a technique where you would go to, like, say, outboard wise, you would go to like a BASE unit, a spatializer unit, uh, the Behringer, um, what's that thing called, Edison. All those do what I'm going to do in the box, okay? Let me, let me give you a before. Okay, now you notice I'm bypassed. Okay, uh, this is a preset I made up. Basically, let me go through it for you so you can copy it. Um, on the loudness side, I'm using that. Uh, on the exciter, I'm, I'm raising a little high end, right here you can tell I'm raising the high end from about 5k up, uh, and then just a, just a generic compressor. But here's the guy, this is the uh, multiband stereo imaging, so I'm going to show you with it. Pretty cool. So now that what we're doing, you can see, I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit. You see that the center kind of clears out a little bit. Okay, that's one technique, and that's representative of a whole group of things. I'm moving fast, now stay with me. Now I'm going to show you a, a, a newer one. This is, um, we went into this the other day. Um, this is uh, Dr. MS. I love this plugin. Uh, this is from an actual song. Without it. Okay, now let's do with it. Study that one for a minute. That's, uh, um, I would say this is more similar to, uh, it's, it's part of the MS technique. Now your homework for next week is to do a little research and a little study on MS techniques. You can find some of that on uh, ProSound Web, Brad Blackwood's uh, moderated forum on there. Brad was our guest a couple of weeks ago. A lot of good information and you will be quizzed on that soon. Now this technique, um, I love this, I love this. This is a good one. This one, what we're going to do is we're, we don't need anything on this one. Um, I, this track right here, this string track, I um, I made a, I made a, I, I made two mono tracks out of it. Um, okay, so now. Um, so now this this track is is just separated into mono, and and what I've done is I've taken I've taken this track, the purple one, uh, the top one, 
and I've shifted it seven milliseconds earlier. I've shifted this one seven milliseconds later. And of course, pan them hard left and right. And now, remember, this came from this track, but instead of, I can't, I can't easily do that here. You, you can shift the whole track early and then, and then put a delay on one side. Now watch, watch what this does. I'm gonna try and A, B this for you. Don't be afraid to do this either. Watch this, guys. Okay, that's another way of getting it out the middle. But Dave, what about mono? What about mono? Okay, and if you've done your homework for this week, you've looked up the Haas effect, H-A-A-S. And what the Haas effect says um, watch this. Okay, here's Wikipedia. I typed in Haas, H-A-A-S, effect. And read this. This will explain to you why we're not necessarily uh, getting phase problems. Um, I could read it to you, but I'm not, because I want you to check this out. This is a very, very, very important concept. And, and we're going to use it again in, in a couple of minutes. This one's kind of silly, but I thought I'd show you just as a way to, um, just to get you thinking a little bit. Now we're going to go back to our uh, string part. I'm going to loop this. Okay, now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take two plugins. I'm going to put one side of the strings out of phase, in phase, out of phase, and now to kind of mess with my air a little bit, I'm going to pan that. Okay, now we can pan it faster and, and, it, and it messes with, the, now let's take them both off so you can kind of hear what's going on. You can even hear that over there, can't you, Will? That's pretty cool. Back on. And then you can experiment with a faster rate. The faster the rate, the, the less time your ear has to focus on the out of phase part because it's moving it away. Now, if we increase the depth, that gets a little crazy. But there again, experiment. Combine some of these things. Let me know. Um, send me like three or four bars of an example soloed. I'd love to hear what you guys come up with. Okay guys, so your homework assignment for next week, you're gonna go to Wikipedia and other sources and read about the Haas effect, H-A-A-S. And then I want you to read about the Fletcher Munson curves. Dylan mentioned that on a show earlier. And those are some really important concepts. We're gonna get into some of these things because in order for me to discuss how to make a, a mix wide and how to give it depth, we have to have certain basic tools under our grasp and under our belt before we can use those building blocks to, to do it. This is not a function of one thing, width and depth. It's a function of a lot of little smaller components. All right, back to you, Dave.